Welcome to the ACORN Meditation for Dealing with Difficult Emotions. We're often not taught how to deal with our emotions, or if we've suffered from trauma, emotional abuse or neglect, narcissistic abuse, or a traumatic event, we can't just will our emotions away. The nature of trauma is that emotions get stuck in the body and no amount of willpower gets rid of them. And we're not taught how to let go of anger, fear, depression, sadness, shame, and guilt with trauma. But here's the thing. If we react to these emotions with another difficult emotion, we're layering them. And it's twice as difficult to heal or overcome the emotions. Because the emotion itself isn't necessarily a sin. But what we do with it is what matters. So what do we do when a difficult emotion comes up? But how do we do this? We target the emotions right where they are, in the body, at their source. Being able to process the emotions by reversing whatever put them there in the first place and from where they're at, and being able to allow the emotions to filter and shift back up through the stages of our neural network, we are able to let those emotions shift back up through the neural network and out of our bodies. I began to see that healing was possible and what happened to me was not my fault and that there had to be a way to overcome this even though I hadn't found a significant way before. And indeed, there are so many somatic type processes that we can use to heal trauma from our bodies and one that I've come up with is to deal with difficult emotions. So we need to find a way to deal with those emotions where they're at and where they come from at their root. And I believe is a gift from God, the gift of healing our emotions. So when a difficult emotion such as fear, anger, or shame come up, in the following process on them, God at the helm of the process, say, Jesus, take the helm and do the process through prayer, talk, meditation, EFT, journaling, or some combination of them or some other similar form. This meditation here that takes you through the whole process is called ACORN. I created ACORN in response to all of those problems I just described. ACORN is an acronym of the steps we take to process our emotions on a visceral level at their root. Through our neural network, using time-tested and scientifically proven strategies. This meditation takes you through ACORN in real time so you can process difficult emotions and release them permanently from your body. Learning to experience love inside of ourselves from God, for ourselves, and for others is another goal of the ACORN Meditation. The ACORN Meditation is A. Acceptance C. Compassion O. Objective Curiosity R. Refocus Reframe N. No Layering So those steps are what we will go through in our meditation and we slow down and we take our time and we don't rush because it took a long time for that stuff to get worked into your body to make you believe if this is the case that somehow you were messed up intrinsically. If it's so deep in your psyche and in your body that you feel messed up intrinsically, it will take some time to work that stuff out. So easy does it, easy does it, steady as she goes. Be patient, patient with yourself. So when meditating, it's good to have an anchor. For some, it's the breath. For some, it's the sounds in the room. And for others, soft music. We will use God as our ultimate anchor with our breath and the music in the background helping us stay grounded during this time and staying rooted in God's truth. Letting emotions filter through your nervous system takes time, patience, and love 
So always allow what is happening. Accept your emotions and love yourself and feel the emotions and feel God's love through the whole process. It's okay. You're safe. It's okay. No matter what's going on, you're always safe. If it ever gets to be too much, you can walk away. But just remember, you have God's protection. You have God's prayer of Psalm 91 over your spirit and life. God is speaking those words over you. You are protected and you are safe. You are safe. It's okay. Say it. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Let it out. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Take another deep breath. Let it out. Now say, I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. breathe. There. Is that better? You are always safe. Now, with the steps of the ACORN process, we're going to start A. Acceptance. That's A. Acceptance. And we're going to take a few minutes to go through each step, as it is, as it's meant to be. Now, First, identify an emotion that's going on in your body. It might be one that's overpowering. You may immediately know what's causing the emotion, and you may not have any idea, and it's just coming out of nowhere. It's okay. So the first step is not to push the emotion away. The first step is acceptance, also known as surrender. Recognize your emotion. What is the emotion that most wants your attention the most now? Recognize it. Identify what the emotion is. Give it a name. Naming it makes it lose its power. I'll say it again. Naming it makes it lose its power. Accept how you feel without judgment. Acknowledge and own the emotion. Own as in, I have this, not I am this. I have this emotion. I am not this emotion. Now take a few moments and recognize this emotion. Identify it and give it a name and just let it be there. Just feel it. It's safe. It's okay. Just feel it without judgment. Take about two minutes or so to do that now.
Okay, coming back. The second step in the process is compassion. That's C, compassion. As Christians, we're often taught to offer compassion to other people, but sometimes we forget to give compassion to ourselves too. We're to love our neighbors as ourselves. And one thing that I've thought about is that if the whole world is commanded to love their neighbors, then that's like seven or eight million people commanded to love you, just like you're commanded to love them. So it goes both ways. We're all worthy of love. Learning self-compassion is an important part of the process. It might not be as important as God's love, but it is very important. Offer yourself with this emotion in mind and understanding what emotion it is without judgment, accepting it, offer yourself open compassion and allow yourself to feel surrounded by God's visceral, tangible love and grace while you feel the emotion at the same time. If it helps, think about someone that loved you unconditionally and made you feel safe. Think about what that feeling was like. It might have been your dog or your cat. It might have been a grandmother. It might have been God himself. But think about that and that will help you to bring up that feeling of embodied love. Rest in this love. Picture the emotion with the backdrop of an open sky. Picture a crisp autumn blue sky that is God's pure and infinite love. Feel the emotion and love with this picture in your mind for a few minutes until the emotion begins to lose its power. It's open, infinite, unending, abundant space, love, and grace. God's love is open sky. Picture that emotion that you have with the background of unconditional, perfect, flawless grace and love. God is love. So picture that emotion and yourself with that emotion being surrounded by that and just feel it and see it however it comes to you and feel that greater open space of love and awareness to surround your emotion. Breathe while you do it. Keep your breath open and natural. Do that for about two minutes now. Okay, O, the third step 
And the ACORN acronym is O. That is objective curiosity. But objective curiosity asks you to explore your emotion with objective curiosity, full awareness, and mindfulness. What does the emotion feel like? For example, if you feel anger, is it seething, burning, feeling in the pit of your stomach? Is it a tightness in your chest? If you feel sad, does it feel like something is weighing down on your throat? Like there's a lump in your throat? Do you feel coldness in your arms? If you feel anxiety, is it tingling in your arms and legs? Is it a falling feeling in your stomach? Whatever it might be, what is the sensation like in your body? Where is it located in your body? What are the qualities of the feeling? Is it heavy, tingly, cold, warm? Does it feel like you're falling? Do you feel dizzy? Does it feel dense, light? What does it feel like? So get the sensations in your body, identify them, and then don't stick with the words. Stick with the feelings and the emotions themselves in your body. Go to that place in your body with those feelings and just be there. Just feel it. Don't try to change it or make it anything it's not. Just be there and feel it. Do that for about two minutes now and then we'll do the second half of O. Okay, coming back to O, objective curiosity. Once you've done that, the second step of objective curiosity is to talk to your emotion. There's a therapy called IFS, or Internal Family Systems, where we have a self. And that self is part of who we are, separate from trauma and all of these emotions. It's the observer of the emotions, the witness of our experiences. That's the self. But these different parts are there to try to protect us. So asking these emotions, what about this emotion in my body needs attention now? You could ask it, what about you most needs attention now? Do it with compassion. Do it with care. Do it with objectivity, willing to hear whatever it says to you. What are you trying to tell me? What do you need me to know? Why? So ask yourself, where is this coming from? 
What is most urgent now? What needs attention the most now? What are you trying to tell me? What is this about? Why? Ask yourself those questions and see what comes up without judgment, without fear, and without forcing it. Just give yourself some space. See what comes up with objective curiosity and mindful attention. Whatever comes up, it's okay. Whatever comes up, you're safe. God is your anchor. He's here with you. Picture him here with you. He's got you. He's got your back. He is your protector. You're safe. Remember Psalm 91. Now, not right now, but just make a little mental note if you feel like it will help you after this meditation. You might go back and write down what happened in this meditation, including the answer to these questions. Take a couple of minutes to explore this and don't judge what you see and feel starting now. Okay, coming back into your body, coming back into your mind. R, try R now. The next step in the ACORN acronym is refocus, reframe. Now we've gone through the process of accepting our emotions and identifying them, showing ourselves open compassion and then exploring the emotion with objective curiosity. Now refocus and reframe. Once you understand where the emotion came from, it is to refocus and reframe the situation around it. Flip the script and change the narrative around the situation. This is something you would keep working on after the meditation, but start here in this process. Every single emotion we have, whether conscious or unconscious, there's a narrative or a script, a feedback loop or a film that plays in our minds over and over and over. And if it's something that's unhealthy, we often call this ruminating or overthinking. But the thought feeds the emotion, the emotion feeds the thought, and so on. Chicken or the egg? Doesn't matter where it started. But what matters is cutting it off, turning it off. So flip the script and change the narrative around the situation. Don't try to change the emotion or force it away. Instead, 
consider applying the serenity prayer to your situation to gradually change your perception of it. So at this moment, ask yourself these questions. What can I change about the situation? What can I not change? Do I know the difference? Write the answers down later and take action to follow through on these questions. But right now, I just want you to reflect on them. Think about your emotions. Think about where they came from and what most needs attention now. Now, within this situation, is there something you can do something about? If there is, then I want you to take note of that now. Think about that now. I'm not asking you to be unrealistic about the emotion. I'm not asking you to deny the emotion. I'm not asking you to cover it up with fake positivity. But having a positive attitude, even about a difficult situation, can be very, very helpful. What I'm asking you to do is to think about healthy ways to solve problems around this emotion and to think about what this emotion is trying to tell you in terms of moving forward and healing. So think about this for a couple of minutes, however it works in your situation. I'll ask the questions one more time. What can I change about the situation? What can I not change? Do I know the difference? Take about two minutes to reflect on this now. Coming back into the present moment. Okay, the final step in the ACORN acronym is no layering. That's N, no layering. And that's the last step. It comes automatically and it's a byproduct of the rest of the steps. By allowing your emotions to be there, you are not layering the emotion It's okay to feel. Feelings don't kill you. Feelings are just indicators that something in our lives needs attention. Not layering means don't be disgusted that you're angry. Don't be frustrated that you're depressed and so on. It just means observe the emotion without judgment. Let it pass like a cloud in the sky. It may even mean not reacting to a reaction to an emotion. And it's hard at first because that fight or flight reaction in our body, we're so used to getting worked up. There's a place between an emotion coming up 
in the reaction. And that's where our power of choice lies. Just like the space between the words that I'm speaking now, that's where the power lies. Our flesh is going to want to give into that because it's so powerful. It's like an addiction. But when we stop and when we pause and when we think, what is something I can do not to react? To choose to respond instead of to react. And as you get more and more experienced at not layering, you'll learn not to bite the hook. Start where you are. It may mean, like I said, not reacting to a reaction to an emotion. If you've already reacted to an emotion, then don't react to the reaction. This could go on forever. But do you see how it starts with a spark and there's a chain reaction and it can just escalate? If we, at any point in the process, can interrupt that, that is where the power to change our lives is. That is how we let go of trauma. That is where healing happens in the body, along with allowing these emotions to be there. That sounds contradictory. It sounds paradoxical, but it's both at the same time. It's about letting go and feeling in the body, but it's also about not letting those emotions control us. And a better way to put it is not letting them have us or possess us. Do you understand how you can embody and hold an emotion and feel it without judgment and without letting it completely possess you? That's where the key lies. The more you do it, the more you will build neural connections in your brain that allow you to do this more and more. That's the acorn process. If you do this again and again and again on your difficult emotions, you will see progress. You will see healing. There will be times when you feel like you're not processing and progressing and healing, but you are. Don't let that stop you. Keep going. Don't give up. So ACORN is a process to help you heal emotions, to help you deal with difficult emotions, and to help you get them through your neural network, out of your body, out of your mind, out of your spirit, and out of your brain so you can begin to learn to process them in a way where you can manifest the fruits of the spirit where you can live in peace, joy, love, harmony, and kindness. And you can actually manifest experiences of love in your own life and be able to love other people more naturally because you love yourself and because you can open those channels that have been blocked and allow God's love and that love comes through into those places where trauma was before and it cleanses all of that stuff and pushes it further out. So I hope this process has been helpful for you. Do it as much and as often as you need. Keep coming back to it. If you go away, come back. If you fall away, come back. God knows our processes as imperfect humans. He takes us just as we are. So don't walk away in shame just because you fall away for a little while. Come back just as you are and God accepts you and takes you just as you are and you'll start to see progress in your life. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you.